Hey there, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani, and today's talk is gonna be on understanding the nervous system. Again, our nervous system is really the control center of the body, lots of different interwoven pathways that connect to our hormonal system. It helps us deal with stress, create energy, helps our muscles move and perform. And I wanna break it down just into a way where people can understand of it and really just kind of wrap their head around it and take away some key action points. So first off, we have our central nervous system and our peripheral nervous system. So central nervous system being our brain, right? Brain and spinal cord, and that branches off into our peripheral nervous system, PNS, which then controls arms and legs and extremities. So that's a really important concept. Everything starts from the brain, goes down the spine, and then to the periphery. And you can see we have our sensory and our motor. So sensory is information going in, or afferent, and then motor is our efferent, or our exiting. So sensory is in, motor is out. So think about it, when you're moving, right, you're motoring, you're running, it's your motor nerves that are actually pushing you or allowing you to perform the movement or exercise that you're doing. Sensory is the ability to perceive the environment, whether it's a moving, unstable environment, whether it's temperature, whether it's the speed that you need to reach or, or run to catch someone. So that's kind of the whole sensory in, motor out. And you can see we have our autonomic and our somatic nervous system here. So our somatic nervous system is what controls the muscles. So we have our central nervous system to peripheral, controlling the arms and legs, and these go to the muscles. So chiropractic and applied kinesiology really fit in well because we can actually test the muscles, manual muscle testing, and we can see how this pathway from the brain down the extremities to the actual muscles work. So this is really cool if you have any injuries or performance enhancement. And again, we can actually test the muscles and apply kinesiology, and we can even apply specific adjustments that affect the central nervous system by moving the spine. Again, you can see here, sensory is really important to the nervous system, and the primary mechanism in which the brain receives sensory input is through movement. So if we're inflamed, if we're sitting all day, if we have an injury, tight muscles, etc., that can prevent the spinal column from moving. And if we're not moving, if certain parts of the spine aren't moving, you're going to see lack of sensory, which means the brain is starving for information. So really important. Applied kinesiology is great for these different areas, as well as, as, well as chiropractic there. Now down the road here, take a look at this. We have the autonomic nervous system. And our autonomic, consider it like your automatic nervous system. It's going on automatically in the background. It's what controls your breathing, it's what controls your blood pressure, your heart beating, it's what controls hormones pulsing out of your adrenal glands or your thyroid. It controls so many different things that you don't have to think about. And you may be able to affect your breathing by manually holding your breath, but again, after such a period of time, you can't, your system overrides it. So your autonomic nervous system, think of it as your automatic nervous system. It's happening in the background automatically. And you can see here we have our parasympathetic and our sympathetic nervous system. So our parasympathetic is like the rest and digest. This is really important for repairing and healing. And most people are so stressed, this branch of the nervous system is really fatigued. All right. So in this part of the nervous system, you're going to have growth hormone, you're going to have DHEA, you're going to have hormones that are really proliferating to help your body heal. Also, parasympathetic drives blood flow inward. So people that tend to have digestive issues, they tend to be more sympathetic, so their blood flows outwards. So we need the blood to be inward to then create gastric secretions, to create hydrochloric acid, which then activates our enzyme systems to break down protein, which then breaks down which would stimulate bile salts to break down fat. So you can see this wonderful cascade that happens when we have good sympathetic to parasympathetic balance. But when we're sympathetic dominant, right, this is our fight or flight. And this is what allows our body to essentially combat a stress or flee from a stress. And this is really important because most people are in the sympathetic log where they're just constantly stressed out. And I mean, they're not running from a tiger, right? That's a punctuated stress. You either survive that and you're good or you're dead. But what's happening today is they're constantly in stress because there's so much emotional stress out there. They're skipping meals. They're eating poor foods, lots of food allergens, 
chronically setting up their gut bacteria to be off. So they have dysbiotic bacteria, which sets up their immune system for chronic infections, and they're stressing their adrenal glands because one of the biggest glandular systems that's controlled by the sympathetic nervous system are the adrenals. So that fight or flight, that feeling, that, that spider sense is when you get when you get really anxious or really on edge because maybe you almost got in a car accident or something like that, that's all stimulated by adrenaline. So adrenaline is the first hormone that gets that fight or flight mechanism moving and then what comes to the party later to keep you in that stressed out state is cortisol. So it's adrenaline then cortisol and most people are so cortisol driven that they have high amounts of cortisol, they have this tired but wiry anxiety going on, right? And then over time that depletes. And part of the reason why that depletes is because we're having HPA access dysfunction right over here. We're having HPA access dysfunction. And that's what's happening here is the brain is so driven here and is having to, to deal with this stress here, it just goes off course. It's like a thermostat that becomes broken and loses the, the ability to talk to the heater or talk to the air conditioner. And most people are driving this pathway so much, this fight or flight mechanism is constantly being driven, it really drives the HPA access totally off, off kilter. Now next thing I want you to focus on here is the enteric nervous system. The enteric nervous system basically is a whole separate nervous system that's in the gut, basically controlled by our gut and our gut bacteria. And this nervous system really is, it's bi-directional, meaning it's both ways. So healthy gut flora, healthy levels of good bacteria, again, lack of inflammation in the gut is really important. But most people, they have early antibiotic exposure, they're eating lots of refined sugar, they're eating tons of pesticides and genetically modified food, which then alter the gut flora. And because if we create inflammation in the gut, that then translates, that then transmits or translates back to the autonomic nervous system. So if we have stress in the gut, that can create stress in the brain. And there's lots of studies comparing gut microbiota and mood and depression. And when they fix the gut, again, lots of times, the mood changes. And Dr. John Gershon out of Columbia Medical School wrote the book, The Second Brain. And he talks about how the gut microbes and your tummy and gut healthy gut microbiota is really important for healthy mental acuity and good emotions. So the gut is paramount right here in having a healthy nervous system. And most people aren't aware that there are just as many neurons in your gut or in your enteric nervous system as there is in your whole entire central nervous system. And that's really profound because most people aren't aware that there's that much effect on your gut connecting to the rest of your body. So this is really important. You can see that this chronic stress is gonna really drive the adrenals, which also affects the thyroid because we need healthy adrenal function for thyroid conversion to T4 to T3. We also know that if we're stressed because of pain or inflammation or poor movement patterns, that drive or that suppresses healthy sensory input from the central nervous system. We know if the muscles aren't functioning here, well, we're gonna have a lack of force absorption coming in because our muscles are our natural shock absorbers, which then create injury and pain, which then drive this whole sympathetic pattern, which stress out the adrenals, which then decrease DHEA and the ability for your body to repair, which then throws off your gut because when your gut stressed, you can't digest. When you can't digest, we have this whole dysbiotic balance of bacteria and that's where 70 to 80% of your immune system is. So you can see understanding your nervous system is vital to really wrapping your head around what's going on when you're not feeling well. So again, this is Dr. J signing off here. If you have any questions or any issues, uh, stressed out, um, gut problems, again, in chronic pain, understanding your nervous system is paramount. And if you want to dig a little bit deeper at all, feel free and click on screen or subscribe below to my many different video series that are going to basically give you more information to put health back in your hands. Again, this is Dr. Justin signing off. Have a great day.